So I wanted to mention to you that I this is a sort of an extension of the other video I just put out about what is going on in South Los Angeles. I believe this is also happening in other places, not just in South Los Angeles. And a lot of this has been an uptick since the pandemic. And so I'm basically putting out there some of the things that people have been experiencing that have been getting worse, um, not getting really be any better, and that has put people on edge. And has also had um, an uptick of prostitution, and I mentioned that in the last video, that there's an uptick of prostitution, but believe you um, me, it is not just people going on the street or going to sell them body on the street independently, landlords have been, in order for people who are desperate that can't make the rent, uh, landlords have been pretty much um, using tenants, coercing them, um, and in order for them to continue staying in the building and without paying the rent, the rent is paid through sex, sexual favors. And so that is a big problem that has been happening in these um, units. So landlords coercing tenants unable to pay rent to provide sex. So the, the question posed here is sex trafficking or not? And so this is a big problem. This is something I think some people were not aware of but it is happening here also in the Los Angeles area in the South LA where people have gotten so desperate that they won't even go to the extent to um, sleep with the landlord um, just to have a place to stay. So according to the numerous published reports, some landlords are using the economic desperation brought on by COVID-19 pandemic to pressure tenants unable to pay rent to provide sex. So make no mistake, this is also considered sex trafficking. So when Polaris shared information about this disturbing trend on social media, recently we heard back from some of our followers that this was not trafficking. So people somehow think this is not trafficking. They view it as bad behavior for sure or disgusting, but trafficking, that's the question here. So this is a back and forth debate whether this is trafficking or not. So not as they understood it. So we appreciate the opportunity to help explain more about how human trafficking really works and what it is really. And so it may surprise you, but sex trafficking is a crime of using force, fraud, and coercion of another individual to engage in sexual activity in exchange for something of value and that happens a lot in south los angeles in this area where i said there's an uptick of the drug sales and so this also goes hand in hand with what is going on in some of these buildings and these commercial landlords are participating in this activity as well and so that's the reason why these neighborhoods also will have high crime um and an uptick of crime in it and they use the the pandemic to say we can't put the people out of the apartments because there's a rent freeze, but they knew even before the pandemic that these people were doing this. And so they never wanted to put them out because they knew that they were getting a big payout and they were also, there was sexual favors and drugs and money and, and, and everything else involved in it. And so be it money, drugs, or rent, the force, fraud, and coercion, usually not entirely separable, can occur when a person is being recruited and throughout the trafficking experience. So while the stereotypical Hollywood version of sex trafficking usually focuses on physical force, being kidnapped or held at gunpoint, for example, the U.S. National Human Trafficking Hotline data shows that in reality, this is extremely rare. So coercion is much more likely to be from trafficking takes and can occur at any time in the trafficking process. So the most common coercion technique is a threat of harm or loss. So an undocumented immigrant as well threatened with deportation if they do not have sex with the boss 
or if they don't work 80 hours without overtime pay. And so a person that is lured into sex trafficking by romantic partners can be coerced into prostitution by threats of ending the relationship. So a mother can be coerced by her trafficker into continuing prostitution by the threat of having her drugs used reported to the Child Protective Services. That's another form of it. And so in the case of a landlord soliciting sex in exchange for rent, the implied threat is clear, so provide sex or you and your family will be homeless. So no payment of plans or reduced rent is offer, offered at all. And so no alternative like cleaning work or building repair is put on the table, but you are quarantined to your home, unable to earn an income, and there really is no choice. So he forces you to trade your physical on autonomy for what you pay that month in rent. So coercion in return for something of value is sex trafficking. So this matters because while landlords soliciting sex in exchange for rent clearly are not deterred by basic decency or human dignity, they may well be swayed if they know their actions are criminal. So human trafficking may never come into their thinking because it is so often seen as a far off crime or something that only is part of the underworld. But of course it isn't. That's why these definitions are worth knowing and clarifying now more than ever before. So the coronavirus creates ideal conditions for exploitation and vulnerable people experiencing economic hardship due to loss of income. So although some states have enacted a moratorium and eviction and rent freezes, these policies are scattered and might not be adequate to ensure that the tenants remain in their homes because in pockets, I'm adding this, some people are still being evicted. They still have eviction uh, judgments against them. And then some people mm -hmm. have still um, a lack of unemployment or little unemployment or unemployment is reduced or their hours are cut, or their jobs are closed, and they can't work, and they can't find a job right away. And so it is essential that people are made aware of their rights and that the resources available to help them as well. So if a person is experiencing sexual exploitation from the landlord, there is a recourse. So sexual harassment by landlords is illegal under the Federal Fair Housing Act. The tenants can file a report with the Department of Justice. So in particular, people of color, undocumented immigrants might be more vulnerable to these times during um, during these times for fear of consequences of reporting to their landlord. So there are additional resources provided on the medium. So the U.S. National Human Trafficking Hotline has resources that can help people in vulnerable positions find safe, healthy places to stay, transportation, and support. So if you are someone or you are experiencing abusive situations, please contact by texting BE FREE, and so it's 233-733, or call 1-888-373-7888. Polaris will be continuously updating the information and resources. And so this is one of what has, one of the things that is going on in these apartment buildings in South LA and in probably other areas. So I'm showing you motels, I'm showing you rental cars, and I'm showing you drugs with backpacks. And so this is what you'll see. Drug addict, uh, drug dealers will carry backpacks. Maybe not this, um, you know, this looks evident right here when you see this. And you'll see with the backpacks, sometimes it'll look like school backpacks, but there'll be drugs, cocaine, other types of drugs like methamphetamine, money, um, weapons inside backpacks. It could be like backpacks that look like it's a kid's backpack or a teenager's backpack or a college student's backpack. Like as if they were going to school, they could be carrying all kinds of types of things inside of these backpacks. And so sometimes the backpacks maybe look like it's just a young young teenager, but sometimes they are in fact carrying uh, drugs. Um, and then they use rental cars and up and down in uh, the LA region and the South LA region. There are, um, it's close to an airport, so there's a lot of rental car agents or car companies where they can rent cars. It has paper plates. And so 
the police can't really trace license plates because um, they use cash. They don't use anything that, that they think can track them. Maybe they falsify even their names. They maybe use even fake IDs. Um, and you have motels along close to the airport where they can do uh, drug trafficking, prostitution, and whatnot. And so you have apartment buildings also where sometimes people will um, think that it's just a regular apartment building, but you might have two apartments where they're trap apartments. And, uh, or, or apartments where they sell drugs or they do good business or they converge. And so you also have the landlords that are in on that and they know that that, that activity is going on in the buildings and also the sex trafficking that's going on in the buildings where the landlords are coercing the tenants to, if they don't, if they don't have the money to pay rent, that they have to have sex with them. And so a lot is going on in these, in, in these areas. It's happening in South LA. This is the area between um, Budlong, Vermont, Manchester, um, anywhere up in along Vermont uh, is South LA region. Um, and then you have Inglewood and then you have uh, Compton and then Watts. And, and so a lot of this is happening. Seems like it's an uptick of this during the pandemic. And so you you have people that, and if you hear noise in the background, or, um, there are people that, are you know moving about and, and whatnot and um, a lot of people that come and go um, and 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 I'm in the heart of where a lot of this is going on. So you might hear people screaming, you might pe hear you might hear uh, you might even hear an uh, argument going on. I, I I don't know if I caught any of that, but I noticed this since I've been in the South LA area that there's a lot of crime. Um, more that has happened since the pandemic and this is happening when I'm always trying to get tenants to have sex with them in order for to pay the rent and then the drug the drug dealing and and a lot of rental cars that are pulling up in, in driveways you know on a regular basis and then this type of activity you see going on sometimes it goes on in broad daylight where you see some people making transactions, they have backpacks, they, you know they've got guns, there's been killings, and so on. In some ways, this video is sort of like a, a, a forewarning or, or alerting of, of enforcements, you know, um, to know that this, this activity is rampant now since the pandemic has ex exacerbated what has gone on. And so you had all these people some of those people who were calling for the police to be uh, defunded wanted to be able to do this activity here that you see. Because if you don't have any um, law enforcement whatsoever on your side at all, and it's just the community and everybody's afraid and, and, and there's a lot of racial divisions, and you have, what it, what is sad is if you're trusting the law to serve and protect you and you have some bad people that are working in law enforcement. It just doesn't, it doesn't work out. And during the pandemic, it's a really bad mix. And so you have all these things going on. And so racism, you have the people that, that want to keep this activity, this drug activity going on in these communities. People are already struggling. They've lost a lot. Some people have lost loved ones due to this pandemic and, and so people have not really taken this thing serious and so it has cost people lives and it's cost them their dignity and their safety so um, I'm gonna let this video go but this is what I've seen happen this is this is really sad but landlords are even asking set for sexual favors during a, a, a pandemic um, and, and also allowing drug dealers to take over apartment buildings so that they can get a big payout and this activity is going on and, and innocent lives, more lives will be lost due to senseless uh, killings and violence because people are just running amok in some of these areas that they feel that they can get away with it. And if, if it's poverty and it's black people and it's poor people, they figure nobody's checking for those people over there. 
so they can kind of get away and pretty much do what they want in these communities that have been like forgotten about. So having said that, I'm going to let this video go, like, comment, subscribe, and, and you be safe out there. And that's what I mean by be safe, protect your families, because a lot is going on since the pandemic has developed. So these are developing stories. So just be safe out there and, you know, uh, uh, stay vigilant and alert at what is going on and um, keep your eyes and ears open. You know, like when I walk out to do any normal life stuff, you know, I have to be careful about my whereabouts because it, it, the neighborhood I stay in is it's got a lot of, a lot of uh, activity going on and um, it's unfortunate. So having said that, I'm going to let this video go. Thanks for listening.